Hi guys, it's Jay Young again. Three things in this world are constant. Death, taxes, and Pakata Harapan saying our country is going bankrupt before the general election. PKR Subang MP YB Wong Ching claims that at this stage, Malaysia is not at risk of bankruptcy. However, if Malaysia does not further increase its gross domestic product GDP, and given the growth rate of our nation's current national debt, he forecasts that within 10 to 15 years, Malaysia's national debt would equal to that of our GDP and thus our country faces the real risk of bankruptcy. I agree with half of what YB has stated. At least, he has honestly admitted that our country will not go bankrupt at this stage. During the 14th general election, Pakatan Harapan's main narrative was that our country was going bankrupt. In addition to misleading the rakyat, this tall tale has also scared away foreign capital. After all, if it were you, would you invest in a country that was on the verge of bankruptcy? But this time, the wording has changed a bit. More specifically, YB is saying that there is the risk of bankruptcy in 10 to 15 years from now. Assuming that if our country does not further increase its GDP, assuming that our national debt will continue to rise, assuming that the budget deficit will continue. A bit too much of assumptions, don't you think? Nature is dynamic and in 10 years, these assumptions may no longer hold. Instead of taking these words seriously, let's take them as a well-meaning reminder instead. YB has also emphasized that as tax revenue is likely to fall, the 78 billion ringgit subsidy might not be feasible. Of course, tax revenue will decline. Didn't the Pakata Harapan government consider this before replacing the GST with SST? Tax collected from GST in 2017 totaled 44.3 billion ringgit as opposed to 27.9 billion ringgit collected under SST in 2021. Remember when Pakata Harapan said that SST is a better tax? It's funny that today they are the same ones who remind us that tax revenue may drop. Therefore, any economic proposal must be based on the interests of the rakyat and the country. In order to win the last general election, Pakata Harapan kept shouting that the GST would be abolished and that the country was about to go bankrupt. These rhetorics may bring short-term political benefits, however, our country's economy has suffered long-term damage. The promise of repealing the GST, which did more harm than good, was speedily implemented. As for other promises in their manifesto Harapan which they claim would benefit the public, they then said that the manifesto is not the Bible. Get your priorities right, please. Election manifestos, especially pledges which concern the economy, must benefit the country and its citizens. In addition to that, we must also ensure political stability so that promises can be delivered on time. Our economy has been stagnant for four and a half years. We cannot afford for it to stagnate for another five years. Please reject unrealistic promises and fear-mongering slogans. To us, the manifesto is indeed the Bible and promises must be delivered. I'm Jay Young. See you next time.